on World News Tonight. Lethal landslides. Many lives lost or missing following the major collapse of illegal mines. Deadly discoveries. Omicron suspected to wreck more havoc than expected. Stern warning. Russia threatens for war in response to increasing international pressures. Shimmering New York. Feeling new hope, visitors flock to witness marvelous displays of light. From the global resources of the Verna Media Network, this is Other Verna World News Tonight. Now reporting from Studio 24 in Colombo, here's Suzanne Shainali. A very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. We start off today's coverage with updates on a lethal landslide in Myanmar. At least one person has died and 70 are missing after a landslide occurred at a jade mining site in northern Myanmar. Rescue operations are underway with most of the victims believed to be illegal jade miners. The landslide occurred in the Kachin state. Myanmar is the world's biggest source of jade but its mines have seen numerous accidents over the years. The landslide is believed to have been accused by an overflow of rubble discarded from lorries to the open pit mines. The rubble creates large slopes that can be dangerous in an area denuded of trees, forcing those scavenging for fragments of the semi-precious stone to labour in hazardous conditions. Jade mining is banned in this area but locals often defy regulations driven by lack of employment and impoverished conditions that have worsened from the COVID-19 pandemic. Several days ago, at least 10 unskilled miners went missing in another landslide at a jade block in the same area. Now moving on to the updates of the COVID pandemic, Omicron, which has become the dominant variant in most states, has been seen found to be no less lethal than Delta. Coupled with its higher rate of infection, the new variant is likely to cause more harm than its predecessor. With Omicron overtaking Delta as the dominant variant of COVID-19 worldwide, new data shows it's just as serious. Researchers at Imperial College London compared some 11,000 Omicron cases to nearly 200,000 people infected with other variants and saw no evidence of Omicron having lower severity than Delta. That's according to a report issued ahead of peer review. The report also estimated that the odds of reinfection with Omicron are more than five times greater than reinfection with Delta. Dr. Amish Adalja of Johns Hopkins University in Maryland says the latest chapter of the pandemic will have two tracks. Those who are vaccinated will likely have mild illness, while the unvaccinated will face a high likelihood of needing medical care. The Omicron variant now accounts for more than 70 percent of all U.S. COVID-19 cases, according to the CDC, with New York City reporting more than 90 percent of its cases are due to Omicron. The World Health Organization said COVID-19 cases are now doubling in one and a half to three days in areas with community transmission. Countries across Europe are imposing new lockdowns as a wave of Omicron washes across the continent. Israel and the U.S. reported their first deaths from the variant Monday. Despite an increase in cases, U.S. health authorities are considering reducing the 10-day recommended quarantine period for Americans who test positive for COVID-19, White House Medical Advisor Anthony Fauci said on CNN Tuesday. Reducing the CDC's 10-day quarantine recommendation, he said, would help asymptomatic people return to school or work with the proper precautions, particularly health care workers. U.S. President Joe Biden announced the opening of more federal vaccination and testing sites to tackle a surge in COVID-19 cases sparked by the Omicron variant and said some 500 million at-home rapid tests will be available to Americans for free starting in January. That's why you should still remain vigilant. U.S. President Joe Biden on Tuesday rolled out a series of new measures to battle the Omicron variant as millions of Americans prepare to gather with loved ones. And I know some Americans are wondering if you can safely celebrate the holidays with your family and friends. The answer is yes, you can. If you and those you celebrate with are vaccinated, particularly if you've gotten your booster shot. But he struck a dire tone when speaking to the one in four American adults who are not fully vaccinated, calling it their patriotic duty to get their shots. But it's your choice. Your choice is not just a choice about you affects other people. You're putting other people at risk. Your loved ones, your friends, neighbors, strangers you run into. 
and your choice can be the difference between life or death. To bolster the fight against Omicron, Biden announced the opening of more federal vaccination and testing sites and said some 500 million at-home rapid tests will be available to Americans for free starting in January. He also said that some 1,000 military medical doctors, nurses and medics have been deployed to support hospitals already being overwhelmed by COVID-19 patients in some areas. Biden added that Omicron is so contagious that it will infect vaccinated Americans, but that they will be far less likely to become seriously ill. He even noted that former President Donald Trump had gotten a booster shot. Maybe one of the few things he and I agree on. And called out social media companies and TV networks for, quote, peddling lies and allowing misinformation that can kill their own customers. It's wrong. It's immoral. New COVID-19 cases are up 72% since the start of December. Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison ruled out a Christmas lockdown, saying hospitals were coping well with a record surge in COVID-19 cases fueled by the Omicron variant. For more on this, we have other than a world news special correspondent, Timothy Phillip, who reports now from Melbourne in Australia. Timothy? Yes, Jenna. Australia is grappling with the more transmissible Omicron variant of the coronavirus as restrictions ease ahead of the Christmas holidays after higher vaccination levels were reached. Even as daily infection surged to record tallies, hospitalization and death rates remain low compared with those seen during a wave of cases from the Delta wave. And Morrison said there would be no more lockdowns. Morrison insisted that limiting the spread of the virus comes down to personal responsibility. No national mandatory rule to wear masks indoors would be introduced, although it would be highly recommended. Meanwhile, Australian researchers are conducting a trial to see whether squirting a blood thinner into the nose could offer protection against COVID. The nasal spray uses the drug heparin in an attempt to neutralize COVID's spike protein. The researchers say when it's sprayed into the nose of a COVID-infected person, it appears to make them non-infectious. All right, thank you. That was other than in a world news special correspondent Timothy Philip reporting from Melbourne in Australia. The citizens of Israel were the first in the world to receive the third dose of the COVID-19 vaccine and now Prime Minister Naftali Bennett said Israelis over the age of 60 and medical teams will be el eligible for a fourth COVID vaccination following the recommendation of an expert panel. When COVID-19 vaccines first became available, Israel raced off the starting block and the country was the first to introduce booster shots this summer. Now a government spokesperson says Israel is the first in the world to offer a fourth injection. Prime Minister Naftali Bennett made the announcement after an expert panel meeting Tuesday, saying during this wave, as we did with booster shots during Delta, we intend to be active, groundbreaking and do anything to win. The world will follow us. While no date was given for the rollout, over 60-year-olds and medical personnel will be the first eligible. About 45% of Israelis have received a third dose, but vaccine uptake remains low among teenagers and young children. Authorities are also struggling to convince more traditional communities like Israeli Arabs and ultra-Orthodox Jews to get the jab. The mayor of B'nai Brak, a centre of ultra-Orthodox Judaism, says ways of appealing to the community must be adapted. Daily infections are at their highest rate since October and Omicron cases are contributing to the upward trend. Israel has imposed travel and other restrictions in order to prevent more cases of the new strain and avoid a national lockdown. Let's go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more world news. Welcome back. Russian President Vladimir Putin attributed the tensions over Ukraine to the West and added that if Russia feels threatened by the actions of NATO, a military response is to be expected. Russia's President Vladimir Putin is threatening a tough response if the West does not back down over Ukraine. Moscow has amassed tens of thousands of troops on the border with the former Soviet Republic and is demanding that NATO guarantee it never admit the country into the alliance or deploy weapons or troops there. Speaking to military officials in Moscow on Tuesday, Putin said Russia had no room for retreat. 
What they do now on Ukraine territory, or they try to do, they plan to do, is happening not thousands of kilometers from our state border, but at our gates. They must understand that we have nowhere to retreat. Armed conflicts and bloodshed are absolutely not something we would choose. We do not want such a scenario. We want to solve problems using political and diplomatic tools, but also to have explicit, understandable, well-defined legal guarantees. The U.S. on Tuesday said it was preparing talks with Putin over his security concerns. But many of the Russian leaders' demands are seen as non-starters by Washington and its partners. Karen Donfried, the U.S. State Department's top diplomat for Europe, said Washington would continue to send military equipment and supplies to Ukraine. Meanwhile, the U.S. is said to be considering tough export control measures to disrupt Russia's economy if Putin invades Ukraine. A Biden administration official told the proposed measures would halt Russia's ability to import smartphones, key aircraft and automobile components, and materials from many other sectors. Russia rejects Ukrainian and U.S. accusations that it may be preparing an invasion of Ukraine. The French Defense Ministry said French armed forces killed a leading member of the Islamic State group in Niger and a key suspect in the August 2020 murders of French aid workers in the West African country. The French army says jihadist Suman Aboura was killed in a drone strike as he was riding his motorcycle in Niger's Tilaberi region. He was one of the bosses of the so-called Islamic State in the Greater Sahara, in charge of dozens of fighters. The Islamic State group claimed responsibility for the killings last August of six French aid workers aged between 25 and 31 and their two local guides while they were visiting the Kore National Park, 60 kilometers from Niger's capital Niamey. French forces killed another boss of the Islamic State in the Greater Sahara group, Adnan Abu Walid al-Sarwawi, this August. They believe he ordered the execution of the aid workers. While Sumana Bora is believed to have filmed the execution and overseen publication of the footage. Eleven other people implicated in the murders have been arrested in Niger in recent months. France has begun to wind down operations in the Sahel. Its current deployment of about 5,000 in the region will be drawn down by about half by 2023. Multiple people were killed in Goma during the latest outbreak of protest against worsening national security and what they believed is the imminent arrival of troops from neighboring Rwanda to quell unrest. Deadly protests broke out in Goma in eastern Congo over worsening security. According to police and civil society, a police officer and at least two civilians were killed on Monday. Large rocks littered a street where crowds of demonstrators gathered for a standoff with police. Many in Goma are fed up with a surge in attacks by various armed groups in North Kivu and Ituri provinces, despite the presence of the army and a United Nations peacekeeping mission. Demonstrators are also protesting against what they believe is the imminent arrival of security forces from neighboring Rwanda to stop the unrest. The government denies Rwandan forces are coming to help. No compatriot. Provincial Police Chief Abba Ven said protesters erected makeshift barricades and attacked security posts and stole weapons. <laughs> police fired tear gas to disperse the crowd. Ven added a police superintendent was killed and another police officer was severely wounded, as well as several protesters. We have some good news for you. The COVID-19 vaccination program means that most of us have to come to terms with facing sharp needles. But for some, this is a horrifying prospect. However, help is at hand as an alternative to traditional injections is currently being developed. Injection needles have become a fact of life for many these days as the vaccination program continues to go on. Though the extent might vary, needles are not only terrifying for kids, but also some adults. Trypanophobia, or fear of needles, is one of the reasons that people avoid getting vaccinated. A recent Oxford University survey of more than 15,000 adults in the UK suggested needle phobia accounts for about 10% of cases of COVID vaccine hesitancy. 
This psychological condition means people with the phobia fear shots just by seeing or imagining injections and show physical reactions such as dizziness if the symptoms are severe. Good news for them, though. There is an alternative way to get the shot. Apply a microneedle patch. Countries across the world are all developing types of microneedle patches and South Korea is one of them. Traditional injections might result in side effects such as localized soreness as the drug spreads through the whole body following injection into muscles. But this patch does leave such side effects and instead administers the medicine more efficiently without pain. This means the patch safely generates the immune reaction as the substance gradually melts through skin, dissolving in the dermis layer. No pain, but maximizing the effect in a safe way. For this reason, more and more countries are actively developing the patch, and hopes are high that the microneedle patch could be a welcome substitute for sharp needles. Welcome back and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Facebook, Twitter and Pinterest are among some of the big names to withdraw from the Consumer Electronics Show. Even though in-person event was scheduled to be held on a small scale, the growing concerns over the pandemic has influenced these companies to cancel their plans. In its first executions in two years, Japan hung three inmates on death row. The country's justice minister identified the inmates in a man in his 60s who killed several of his relatives in 2004. The other two are two men aged 54 and 44 convicted of a double murder in 2003. A brawl broke out on the floor of Ghana's parliament as lawmakers debated a proposal post tax on electronic transactions that has divided the house for weeks. A New York jury resumed deliberations on the fate of British socialite Ghislaine Maxwell accused of recruiting and grooming young girls to be abused by late financier Jeffrey Epstein. The mortality rate of North Korea children under the age of five has been decreasing over the past 30 years. The United Nations Child Mortality Report said that 17 out of every 1,000 children in the North die before the age of five. Japan reported its first instance of community spread infection from the Omicron variant of the coronavirus. Osaka's governor said the cases are from the same family and none of the people traveled abroad. The National Hockey League will not send players to compete in the men's ice hockey tournament at the Beijing Winter Olympics due to COVID-19 concerns as the highly transmissible Omicron variant spreads globally. Omicron continues to wreak havoc across the sports world. The National Hockey League has decided not to send its players to compete in the men's ice hockey tournament at the 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics, according to ESPN Tuesday, over concerns of the highly transmissible COVID-19 variant. The move is a reversal from last September, when the league said it would pause its regular season so that the world's top players could compete in Beijing. But there was a caveat. The league would withdraw if COVID-19 disruptions forced games to be rescheduled during the Olympics window. That scenario has begun looking increasingly likely in recent days, with the NHL being forced to postpone 50 games in Canada and the United States after a growing number of players entered COVID-19 protocols, while Omicron tore through professional leagues with fully vaccinated players testing positive. The NHL had until January 10th to withdraw from February's Olympics without financial penalty. Countries will now have to quickly put a plan B in place. For Canada and the U.S., which would have sent teams stocked completely with NHL players, that will mean a top-to-bottom overhaul cobbling together a roster from other leagues. And finally tonight, facing a familiar pandemic doom as the Omicron variant spreads, many are deciding the best choice is to push on with holiday rituals. Such resilience was the attitude in the Diker Heights neighborhood of Brooklyn as visitors from near and far paid a visit to the famed Christmas House Lights Show. The colors of the lights ran the full gamut of the rainbow and the displays represented the full Christmas offering, including nativity scenes, reindeer, tinsel and more. In coming to check out the fabled Christmas house lights and decorations, the visitors said that they felt the experience was just what the doctor ordered. The cheer, however, comes as New York begins to limit its traditional New Year celebration with the spread of the Omicron variant. Many had hoped for a full party to mark a return from last year's lockdown. The Christmas lights of Dyker Heights, however, never fully dimmed even during the dark days of 2020, and the show, albeit reduced, did go on. 
Those who arrived for a visit from more tropical confines for the 2021 lights said that they had no problem with the lack of snow accompanying the Christmas displays. The lights are said to have taken off in the aftermath of the attacks of the September 11, 2001. And in the intervening two decades, the mostly residential neighborhood has found itself as a pit stop for New York holiday tourism alongside the likes of Rockefeller Center and Times Square. In case you have missed any of the stories we aired tonight, you can rewatch by catching us on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash other than English. And that's all the news we have for you tonight. Anuradhi will be back tomorrow with another edition of World News. I'm Suzanne Shanali. Until then, stay safe and have a good night.